Hey everybody, welcome to the inaugural episode of the Bridge the Gap DFS podcast. We're doing a little uh, simulcast on Twitch, going to experiment with this stuff and uh, try to get uh, some content out to you guys in any way that you like to consume it. Uh, we've been doing a ton of stuff. Uh, before we get into the podcast, I, I want to give a special shout out once again to my boy Sequence. A guy has been just an awesome partner in all of the creativity. Um, I'm not a very creative person, and Chris is just awesome at uh, taking the the chicken scratch stick figures in my brain and, and running with these awesome ideas. So he's helped me out with a lot of the logos, and the intro music that we have is uh, brought to us by our boy Sequence. So follow him on Twitter. Um, I'll post a link to all of his music in, um, in the podcast notes. Um, our producer tells me that it takes about 24 hours to get approved on iTunes, and after we're approved on iTunes, we'll uh, be able to get the podcast. So I'm thinking that this should be available everywhere by, by Friday. Um, we'll also be able to, again, we're, we're streaming live on Twitch. Uh, we're going to be covering NBA free agency. If you have any questions that you want to see covered in the Q&A section, we might mix that in between the team previews. We might um, just cover that at the end. Uh, this is everything I do is, is to help you guys. So we'll cover into the, the, the NBA DFS. Um, I don't really want to focus on any of the stuff that, you know, I, I, I don't understand the salary cap. I know they have one. I don't care. Luxury tax doesn't matter to me. Don't know these rookies. So we're going to focus more on how this stuff affects us from um, a DFS perspective. So what we'll, we'll first do is, um, you know, get into a couple announcements here. Just wrapped up the uh, Daily Roto Appreciation video series. I'll be sending out a link every day. I try to do one segment a day, but Everything's uploaded, so if that's you know some content that you guys want to get into, just trying to just get you guys as educated as possible in bite-sized uh, pieces. You know, I'm not trying to give everything through a fire hose. That can be really overwhelming, and trying to you know get better and and learn and and consume media and become a a better player. So. Um, with that said, again, shout out to our boy Sequence. Love the intro music. I tried to pick something out that matches my personality. Hip hop is my my favorite music, and we're gonna let the the entire song play out for the intro. So for the first episode, so you guys show up and you're like, I thought this was about NBA free agency. What is this? What's this music? Why are we going three minutes? So I, that's just a tip of the cap uh, to an incredibly talented uh, individual. Um, so. In future episodes, we'll cut it a little bit shorter. Unless you guys want it the full, this is this is dealer's choice. Whatever you guys want, I don't care. We don't have any sponsors. We can do whatever we want. You want the full? You want me to play this the intro song five times in a row? I'll do it. I don't care. So uh, we'll we'll keep going on this and let's just hop right in. And uh, I see you guys showing up in the chat, and uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Drop the link in on our um, NBA free agency preview. We're just going to go team by team. And we're going to just talk about how um, these these uh, all the player movement affects us from a DFS perspective. I will um, teach you guys how to play NBA. If you got, and if anybody knows Texas Derek, um, hit him up. I taught that guy how to play NBA. <laughs> so, I, I and I, I think when I was teaching him how to play NBA, he was like, "Dude, this is like way too simple. Like this won't work." I'm like, "Okay, then don't try it." And then he tried it, and he's like, "Dude, do not tell anybody about this. This is so. This is way too simple." So everything I do is simple, 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 simple. We always talk about, "Hey, um, anybody, you know, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> any idiot can make things more complicated. True genius is trying to make a complicated subject uh, simple." And I always talk to you guys about in your process, "Hey, if if you're struggling." Uh, strive to make things simpler, not more complicated. The answer is always going to lie in the simplicity. So with that in mind, let's hop into our our, our NBA free agency uh, team-by-team breakdown. And again, follow along if you want to just post a link to the, the Google Sheet. We'll start with the Hawks. Not a ton going on here. Uh, they have some player movement. The big thing to be aware of is, is Bazemore leaving. Uh, he was hurt quite a bit last year. Uh, he was a pretty important factor, but you know it's one of those things that you miss time and teams start to you know not really... Um, Think you're as valuable as as you were, so they they found um, um, he's not a relevant piece for them anymore. So they they, they moved on from Bazemore, and that's going to open up minutes for for Cam Reddish. I'm only going to mention three rookies. I outside of Zion uh, and R.J. Barrett, I don't know any of these rookies because I don't really watch a lot of college basketball. I follow college basketball in the sense of like you know who's going to the tournament, and of course March Madness. Everybody, it's everybody's favorite holiday outside of Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving. So um, 
rookie stuff, I'm, I'm going to – my whole approach to rookies is I don't play season long. I don't play da- dynasty basketball. Is just, hey, let's see what happens when, you know, the starting lineups come out. Then we can judge on and how that's going to be effective. So the only thing to really be focused here on the Hawks is this is going to be the Trey Young show. And um, Cam Reddish, I'm expecting him to slide into the minutes that were freed up by Bazemore. The um, other g- departures are big men that weren't really playing. So I just anticipate that this is going to be, you know, Trey, Run- Trey-, Trey Young, Kevin Herter, everything. And um, this will be a you know a fun team to watch on on League Pass getting up and down the court. Uh, moving on to the Celtics, big big news here. There's there's nothing here that surprises anyone. You know Kyrie's been leaving for a while, and all of a sudden Kemba's going to come in. And it's funny because there's a lot of love like oh Kyrie sucks and Boston fans can't re- get rid of Kyrie. Like I get it. Like I understand why you know they feel that way. Like sometimes like. You might be dating a great person. They might be an awesome person, but you might not be compatible. Like, that's, that's totally fine. And it definitely seems like we have uh, uh, a bad breakup here with the Celtics and, and Kyrie. So, um, you know, I actually, Kemba Walker was a guy that anytime he showed up, and it was like whenever the Hornets played, it was like, great, 50% Kemba Walker again. And I'm just like, very few people that I – see them in my lineups and again I don't tinker with anything I trust the process and Kemba Walker would show up and I would be like no <laughs> not a Kemba not a Kemba day and like my boy JP uh over in the the um <laughs> daily roto chat like every time it was Kemba Walker day we were just like cringing and like he takes care of you but the big thing here is I actually love the fit from a fantasy perspective way better for Kemba in in um in Boston than than you know in Charlotte to be fair to Kemba like he didn't have much to work with like I get that so I know he had to carry a pretty big workload but I actually think like he is a pretty selfless player, and even though he's an all-star, he's not really an alpha dog. You know, he's more of a guy that can blend in behind the scenes. So um, I, I actually really like the fit, and I think this will be a lot better for their for their player development. You know, they lost Al Horford. That's going to hurt. Um, you know, Terry Rozier, that's going to open up some opportunities in Charlotte, and we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, the other big piece is Enos Cantor. Like, he doesn't play defense, but we saw, like, what a monster offensive force he can be in the playoffs um, with the, the the run that the Trailblazers made. So. He's a high usage guy, and, and everything that in NBA DFS revolves around minutes and usage. And we'll talk way more about that, you know, in October as we as we're leading up to NBA DFS. But you know, everything that we're going to talk about is I'm just going to try to adjust to, to show you guys, you know, how the minutes and how the usage is going to be effective. Pretty much for anybody that doesn't know what that is, obviously minutes is minutes spent on the court. Usage is when the guy's on the court, what is he doing? So if he is just standing in the corner, you know, that's going to be a guy with a low usage, like. You're you're really like playing like DFS roulette. Like you don't know if it's going to be the day he just stands in the corner all day, or it's the day that he hits a couple shots and gets a couple rebounds and gets to value. So we really want to focus our attention on the guys that are going to be on the court, and while they're on their court, they're going to be doing something. So that's all you really need to think about is usage. Is when they're on the court, the usage is you know a statistic that's actually a really good statistic uh, that leads us to how involved they're going to be. Moving on to the Nets, um, we know about the departures. The big one was D'Angelo. Um, some of the secondary piece, pieces aren't, aren't that big of a deal. Um, they're not going to really matter. A lot of those guys are just kind of playing back on minutes. Uh, but they bring in Kyrie, which we know, and you know there's going to be a love fest for Kyrie in Brooklyn. KD's there also, and he's um, you know obviously out for a year. And I think it would be really, really good for them, even if it's longer than a year, a year and a half, two years. Like, this, this Achilles, like, you know, ACL injuries, we've seen science develop and these guys can recover a lot quicker, you know, within a year. But with the the Achilles, that's a relatively new injury that these guys are recovering from. And we've seen it with a guy like Rudy Gay. Like, Rudy Gay got back to pretty decent form. You know, Boogie came back, and we could see that his body, he didn't really trust his body like he used to. So it'll be really interesting to see how Boogie does this year in year two coming off the Achilles. That should be a good barometer for us to know, you know, what's what's how's, what's KD going to be like when, when he shows up. The other additions that they added is DeAndre Jordan, which, you know, they're making a big deal that, you know, it's going to be the big three. But DeAndre really hasn't been um, that you know, impactful of a player. I think he can still play, but it's just weird. You know, he big signs this big deal to go to the play of the Mavericks and, you know, nothing. You know, he doesn't get any minutes. And the same thing with the Knicks. He goes to the Knicks and doesn't really see any minutes because they have all the young guys. So I don't know if he's washed up or if it's a, a matter of the 
the locations that he was at that it just didn't work out. We'll see. I mean, I, he's a big guy. Like, you can't coach big. So, you know, he's a double-double machine depending on how often he's going to be on the court. So this is so this is a perfect example of what I mean of, of, of usage versus minutes. So take a player like DeAndre Jordan. He's a high-usage player. Like, when he's on the court, he's going to touch the ball. He's going to protect the rim. He's going to get rebounds. That's what we want. The minutes might not be there. You know, I think he was playing close to 30 when he was at the Clippers, back down to about 20 with Dallas and New York. The other addition that they added is Garrett Temple. Garrett Temple in Memphis was high minutes, low usage. He's on the court. He's more of a defensive specialist. So, you know, there are days when, you know, Garrett Temple can get you there statistically and and get you, you know, one of the best days I ever had this last year. I had like, I don't know how he ended up in 30% of my lineups, but he got there and he's like 4% owned. So that's, you know, everything we talk about leverage and stacking with baseball is extremely applicable to the NBA. So we'll move on to the, the Hornets. They lost Jeremy Lamb. They lost Frank Kaminsky, you know, Lamb was actually, you know, made a big step forward. So this is going to open up some opportunity with him being gone and Kemba being gone. Like, I actually, like, love this spot for Terry Rozier. Like, everybody talks about, like, oh, what a downgrade, and they should have kept Kemba and all this. And it's like, you know what? I get that. But, like, I'm not Michael Jordan. Like, I don't run the Hornets. Like, I'm just a dude who likes to play fantasy sports. So Terry Rozier going from a disgruntled player on the Celtics bench to now a starting player running his own team in Charlotte that's pretty devoid of a lot of talent like that's perfect like I did like Terry Rozier is like in for the Hornets this year like he's a guy that I would anticipate like maybe his salary starts out at like 5800 6400 something like that and then by the end of the year he's just constantly like in the 7900 8200 kind of like a Devin Booker kind of a guy where it's like you know, doesn't have a lot around him, and he'll be asked to do more than he's ever been asked to do. And we saw in the playoff run from two years ago when Terry was called on, he actually rose to the occasion. You know, he's going to be inconsistent, but the thing that's going to be better about Rozier and Charlotte versus Kemba and Charlotte is Kemba comes with the Kemba price tag, where, you know, if he's inconsistent and Kemba Walker's salary is 1000 2000 more, more than Rozier, you know, we're dead. We can't take a, you know, a 3X from a $9,000 salary player like Kemba and expect to win. But if Terry Rozier, you know, only gets to 3x and he's 6,400, that's a little bit more forgiving than, you know, a main building block like Kemba usually is when you have to pay up for him on the days that he's in. Moving over to the Bulls, I actually like what the Bulls are doing. And, you know, it's it's funny because people are really um, congratulating the Bulls for having a nice offseason, and they are. But they're doing pretty similar stuff to what the Knicks are doing, and everyone's crapping all over the Knicks just because the Knicks didn't get the big names. And if your team can't get a big name, what you should be doing is what the Bulls did. Hey, let's just bring in like some good players. Like, let's just bring in some quality players. Like, hey, maybe the building block, big time free agent, we can get him, you know, in in February. Or, you know, maybe we can, you know, take a shot at a guy like Draymond that's going to be a free agent next year. Everyone's talking about how great this free agent C period was, and it it was great. It's phenomenal. But, you know, supply and demand, like there's going to be a demand – for, for players every single year. So I don't mind when teams, you know, kind of sit the offseason out and not spend the big money when they're not in a position to make a title run. You know, we always say, well, we really haven't talked about this, but like me and my buddy Nick, we always talk about like, I'll ask him like, hey, Nick, you know, when, when you're one player away, you know, how far are you? He's like, and we always say like, you're never one player away. Like you're never one player away in any sport. You're never one player away. So it, it takes much more than that. So I definitely appreciate the teams that are willing to, you know, not fool themselves. And it's funny, like, Teams that aren't fooling themselves in the pros is just like we need to do that in DFS too. Like we not, you can't force it. It's a it's a slow process, and we want to be, you know build long term sustainability. You know we want to be like the and, and I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but this is what you guys love is when I go on down these rabbit holes. So let's go. So you know I love what the Pelicans did versus the Lakers. Like the Lakers, if they don't win a title in the next two years, like this was a terrible move. And the Pelicans, like. Wait till we get to the Pelicans, like, they stacked assets. Like, that's what we need to be doing in DFS. Like, we need to just, that slow burn. Like, you know, I was, I was working with a guy earlier today. He's in Florida. I was like, dude, like, I could literally walk to Florida if I wanted to. Yeah, I could get on there and get on a plane and go there faster. But, you know, we can get there one step at a time. These teams can get there one step at a time. We can be great DFS players one step at a time. So just continue to embrace the process and be patient. You know, love your life. Cavs didn't do anything. They shouldn't be doing anything. But one thing that's in play for the Cavs that I think is really cool that nobody's really talking about is, um, you know, like Kevin Love. Like Kevin Love's like a really good player. Like I love Bill Simmons. And he was talking this week about, um, you know, (laughs) Kevin Love going to the Lakers and rejoining LeBron. I'm like, um, like, 
I don't want to make light of mental illness because I definitely struggle with it. But it's like Kevin Love was like a happy-go-lucky guy, and now he's struggling with anxiety. Why the hell would he go back to play with LeBron? I don't know. So, you know, I'm just a dude who plays fantasy sports. I don't know anything. But I, I think, like, Kevin Love is, like, an amazing piece for a team out there, like the Warriors that could fill an amazing void, come in, and he plays the five in that finesse offense, and all of a sudden, Bobby Myers retooled in three moves when they were supposed to be re rebuilding and were never going to be relevant ever again. So that's the only thing to be, keep an eye on with, with the Cavaliers is, you know, Kevin Love is an amazing piece in the right location, can go get back to his all-star form, and I think he's definitely in play for a contender. Um, the Mavs, I love what the Mavs are doing. They're just kind of standing pat as well. They could have got aggressive in free agency. And you know what? They added Porzingis last year. They brought back Seth Curry. J.J. Barea is a great piece off the bench. He was hurt. He's coming back. And then they signed Boban today. Like, that's awesome. Like, you know, and, that, and it's kind of funny because, like, you know, Boban is, like, our, like, DFS. Like, he's, like, our DFS darling. Like, we love Boban. Like, when, when he's in the game, we love it. When he's getting to start, it's, like, Boban day, Boban day. Like, Boban's minimum salary, and we know he's getting to 45 points. Like, and it's crazy because, like, we watch it, and we're, like, why doesn't Boban get more minutes? And then he gets more minutes, and we're like, this is why we're DFS GMs and not professional GMs. But he's, a, he's an awesome guy to root for. But it's just like a nice piece. And Bob Volgaris is, is behind the scenes helping the Mavericks. And I, if I'm a fan of the Mavericks, like I'm super like excited about that because that's a sharp guy who, who studied the analytics the right way and made a, you know, a, a ton of money as a sports better. And he, you know his passion in life is to be involved in running a team. And now he has the opportunity. So... Any move the Mavericks make, it's going to be very Belichickian where, you know, if Bill Belichick calls you up for a trade, like, you should hang up immediately. You know, if the Dallas Mavericks, and the same thing with Daryl Morey in Houston. If, if Daryl Morey or Bob Volgaris calls you for a trade, like, hang up immediately because you're probably losing, you know, that deal. So I just love what they did. They didn't do much, and they're going to, you know, let their, their young core gel. Like, Luka is a very, 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 very special player. And I was, like, looking at the depth chart on Roto World, and they have, I was, you know, they uh, – you know, someone was saying that they're going to bring in Drogic. And I'm like, well, they already have, you know, Luca as a point guard. Like, Roto World has Luca listed as a power forward. And I was like, wait, what? And I'm like, Luca six. Like, I don't even realize, like, how, like, as good as Luca is, I underappreciated him. And, like, Luca Day was, like, my favorite day. Like, I hated Kemba Day. Like, I loved Luca Day. And Daily Roto loved Luca. So I had a lot of Luca this year. And that's one of my favorite things about. DFS, like, Carmelo washed out last year, you know, and everybody was like, oh, man, like, Hood O'Malley, Hood O'Malley in, in Houston, like, look out, they got a new big three. And I'm like, dude, like, Melo hasn't been, like, a, a, a go-to piece in DFS in three years. And it's just kind of funny how it works out when a guy, like, stops being relevant in DFS, you know, before, like, we see it before, like, the these leagues and these teams and the general fan bases see it. So, um that's just I know we're 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 all over the map here, but I'm I'm gonna connect the dots. Denver, same thing as as Dallas. They didn't do much. Like they they believe in their young cores. And like that's the thing that I love about Denver. Like we just go back to what we were just talking about. Like you're never one player away. Like you're never one player away. And so they're just like, hey, you know what? Let's just kind of bring everybody back. You know, there was some talk about, you know what, Denver should trade for Bradley Beal. It's like how is that going to work? How is that going to work? You know, Jamal Murray and Bradley Beal and Paul Millsap and Jokic, like, on paper, like, that's awesome. But, like, that's a lot of mouths to feed. And I'm sure that there's people that disagree with me. But team chemistry matters. And, you know, I think Bradley Beal would be an awesome second or third piece on a contender. He deserves to get out of Washington. But, like, I would hate for him to go to a team like Denver, you know, they could probably make the backcourt work where, you know, uh, Jamal Murray is, is running point more and feeding, you know, Bradley Beal off ball in a perfect world. But, you know, Jamal Murray is a guy that likes to have the ball in his hands and you have your superstar who's a distributor. So there's a way that that could work, but I just don't know if that would gel as much of, you know, Jamal Murray with, with Bradley Beal. But anyway, they lost it to Isaiah Thomas, who wasn't playing anyway. And, you know, I, I don't mind when these teams are like, hey, you know what? Looking at the, the free agency market and just, we're going to just pass. We're just going to pass. We're going to reinvest into our team. We think we're a lot closer than, um, you know, maybe we're getting credit for. Nobody's talking about the Nuggets. They were right there. You know, they were game seven away from being in the Western Conference Finals. So the West is there for the taking. Everybody has the Lakers as the favorites. And unless they get Kawhi, I don't see how that team is going to be the favorite for the title. On They have the names. Like, I get it. But it's just one of those things where it's like, 
You have LeBron who tore his groin. You have AD who, you know, consistently has knee or hamstring issues. And then you have Kawhi Leonard. None of those guys last year played 82 games. They have no bench. You know, we'll get into who they brought into, but that's what I'm saying is, you know, look at this Toronto team that just won the title. They didn't win because they had the most talent. They won because they survived the war of attrition. When the, the, the Warriors just kept dropping like flies, they were the winner by default, you know? And that's, again, like, that's another thing with, D, with, with DFS. Like, we talked about this last week. Like, just make less mistakes than everybody else. If we can just stay a little bit healthier than everybody else in, in, our, in our play, in our approach, in our bankroll management, like, we can compete for the NBA Finals. And that's what I'm also telling you guys about not chasing the big scores because if you're not chasing the big scores, like, who do you want to be like? Do you want to be like the Lakers? that are trying to go all in in two years, and if it doesn't happen, they're blowing up again. And hate to break it to you, Laker fans, like your team hasn't really been that relevant the last 20 years because you've overcommitted to Kobe, and now you've overcommitted to LeBron. So when we're overcommitting to tournaments we don't have any business playing in, we're going to burn through our bankroll. So we want to be like these teams that are building the good infrastructure, like the Rockets and the Warriors and what the Mavericks seem to be doing and the Nuggets, so we can play in these tournaments every day, work our way up, and then we can chase 50 grand every day, not, dude, if I don't win 50 grand today, like, I got to get a third job. It's like, shouldn't be playing DFS anyway if that's your attitude. Moving on to the Pistons, shout out to my boy Brad. This is his team. I feel for you, dog. I know this is a team that you want to see me doing better, and you can't seem to get out of their own way a little bit. Um, they lost some uh, backup guard play in Ishmith, uh, replacing that with Derek Rose, Tim Frazier, and then they brought in um, one of the Morris brothers, Mark Keith. You know, not a ton moving here. Uh, decent, decent ads. From a fantasy perspective, you know, I think Derrick Rose is going to, um, you know, I think he can put it to Reggie Jackson for minutes. So Derrick Rose might be, you know, another sneaky. He was sneaky good in some spots from a DFS perspective this year, which is funny because it's like he gets on the cart and he just wants to be a ball hog. And, like, that's not great for for NBA perspective. For, 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 for DFS, it's like, hog that ball, Derrick Rose. Get me my points, you know? And there was numerous times, like, he broke the slate. And so that's something to keep an eye on. But also knowing his injury history and the injury history of Reggie Jackson, Tim Frazier can get it done when he's given the minutes. He just isn't given the um, – the minutes all that often, um, so we'll see how that see how that works out. But you know, I, I definitely think that there's some sneaky, um, you know, um, minimum salary, lower salary options here in the guards for the Pistons. You know, based off of injuries. Moving on to the Warriors, um, brought in D'Angelo Russell, lost KD, lost Iggy, Jordan Bell. They brought in Glenn Robinson. Um, you know, Glenn Robinson hasn't done much, so I don't know how um, he's going to impact the team. But the Warriors have you know brought us guys out of nowhere like Kevon Looney and resurrected careers into, into relevance. So Boogie's still a free agent. They could bring Boogie back. I don't know if they will. Uh, they brought back Kevon Looney. Um, a lot of people are talking about, I don't I don't get the fit. Like, like D'Angelo Russell and Steph Curry, like, don't go together. And it's like, what were they going to do? Like, they should have got some forwards. Like, who? Like, Kawhi? You don't think they tried? Julius Randle, you don't think they tried? They brought Kevon Looney, Looney back. It's, it's just like, what were they going to do? You know, and they, they figured out a way to get D'Angelo Russell. And they're like, Phew. D'Angelo Russell, like, too many people are thinking about D'Angelo Russell and, like, the Nick Young drama with uh, whatever that musician was. It's like, where have you guys been? Like, D'Angelo Russell is developing into a fourth quarter stone cold killer. Stone cold assassin. And I don't know if you guys know this. Like, I'm going to tell you, like, get real close to the microphone. Like, I'm going to tell you guys a secret right now. I don't know if you guys know this. Please don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that doesn't listen to this. In the NBA, if you don't score points, you're not going to win. I mean, come on, like, Steph Curry, like, we seen, like, he's a little guy, like, you can beat him up. Like, we saw that's pretty much what the Raptors did. They won because they, everyone else got injured and they wore Curry down. He needs help, heavy lifting with the scoring. Dr the scoring's not going to come from Draymond. Clay's out. They just lost Durant. Clay might come back this year. He might not. If I'm the Warriors and I just signed him to a max deal and the Splash Brothers are the face of my franchise for the next decade, I'm like, Clay, I'll see you in 2021, dog. Like, you get right, man. I'm not going to try to rush this guy back to be a six seed, to get knocked down in the second round of the playoffs. Like, that's dumb. Like, Bob Myers isn't dumb. Like, he made a great move in getting the Angelo Russell. I absolutely love it. They're going to need help scoring. So, so what, neither of those guys don't play. They're not, you know, defensive all-stars. Guess what? Steph Curry's D isn't that bad. It's not bad as bad as it's made out to be because they have a great defensive scheme. Guess what? D'Angelo Russell is an all-star who's 23 years old. 23-year-old all-star? Like, 
that dude's 12 years younger than me. Like, we lose sight of this stuff. And it's just crazy. Like, we feel like he's older because he's been in the league since he was, like, 19. But, like, he's maturing perfectly. Like, he had a great year, and he proved that he can be an alpha dog. So when Steph's not on the court, he's going to do the heavy lifting. When Steph's on the court, he can play off the ball. He can run the point. You know, he, he does get involved in passing and rebounding. Like, he can get steals. You know, defense isn't just about manning up. It's about causing havoc. That's what Steph Curry does. They're going to teach D'Angelo to do the same thing. And guess what? When Clay comes back, and if they can re-sign Draymond next year, this team's retooled and back. Like, I don't know if it's as scary as – I don't think they're ever going to be as scary as when they had what they just came off with with, with Kevin Durant. But, like, Bob Myers knows what he's doing. And then I heard that there's some rumblings that they're going to bring in Willie Cauley-Stein. Like, that is, like, the perfect big man for this offense. Like, I love Willie Cauley-Stein. Like, if I'm playing pickup basketball, like, my first pick is Willie Cauley-Stein because he does everything you want in a teammate. He cleans up the boards. He protects. He's not about getting his score, but he can get buckets if you need it. He's unselfish. You know, he's not the best passer, but he's willing to give up the rock. Like, there's some things in here for the Warriors, not to mention, like, they are a perfect fit for Kevin Love. So we'll, we'll see how, how that, that works out. Um, I, I, but I'm just very impressed with Bob Myers. Like, he's, he's, he's a stud for a reason. And, you know, the smartest thing that the Lakers can do other than – excuse me, the Warriors can do other than keeping Steph Curry is, is making sure Bob Myers is happy. Uh, Rockets, Daryl Morey's kind of sitting out. There are some whisperings that they might get Jimmy Butler. You know, I, I think that's something that we're noticing once a year. Daryl Morey will get in the mix of uh, – a, uh, a free agent, a big name, just to get some some headlines. I know he did that with LeBron a couple years ago, but they're going to run it back, it looks like, and I, I don't think that th- that's going to be a struggle. There was a lot of heavy lifting done by Harden this year, and they just lost Ariza. So, you know, Daryl's very good at what he does. I'm sure, you know, when we're seeing what looks like him playing chess, he's playing checkers, he'll figure out a way. You know, Capella wasn't as good of a player in the playoffs as he is in the regular season, so they'll still be able to get the wins. Nothing really here changing from a, a DFS perspective other than keeping an eye on who's going to step in and get the minutes that, that Ariza. Because that's what I – Ariza's – going back to our, our minutes and usage guys, like Ariza is like the perfect guy you want in your lineup every single night. He's going to have minutes – like he's always on the court. And his usage is decent enough to where he can have ceiling games, but his salary is always like in the, you know, high 4,000s, low 5,000s. Like, that's a perfect building block. I have no issue ever having a guy like Ariza in my lineup at 60, 70, 80%. Like, I don't care. Like, that's a very low-risk move. Moving on to the Pacers, the first thing I want to highlight here is Depot's back. Oladipo's back. You know, I want to talk about some of the guys that were out all last year. And the, the Pacers have brought in – it's kind of weird what they're doing. They're bringing in some some decent guard play, and, and maybe that's what – maybe that's – the, a good thing, a smart thing, because maybe they're looking at, hey, maybe Depot got hurt because of some of the heavy lifting he had to do last year. So they bring in Brogdon, who's a you know six man, a rookie of the year, great um, six man this last year once he got healthy, an unselfish player, but he can score. Uh, Jeremy Lamb can get buckets. They brought in T.J. Warren. I mean, some of the pieces from a financial perspective are kind of weird. Some of the fits a little weird, but I don't care about any of that. Like. There's, there's minutes here. Bogdanovich is gone. Uh, Thaddeus Young is gone. Corey Joseph is gone. So we, we can see some of these teams, it's a little bit harder to see how the new pieces are going to align. But with, like, the Pacers, like, we can see how it's going to align. Like, we, we know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the depot show, and he's going to have some nice pieces around him so that he can get his buckets. And then they brought in some backup scoring to, to in ball handling for, from what they lost. So nothing, nothing too different here with the Pacers um, and with the new pieces they have. Lamb and Brogdon should be able to get the same kind of stats that they were getting, just just a new locale. Clippers uh, haven't done much. They brought in Mo Harkless. I like Mo Harkless. Um, I know he's had some injury issues that have um, stunted his growth. So I, I, you know, but that that that's one thing that I do like though. I like when guys that kind of washed out in their last location and get new life in a new city that's, you know, now that Balmer, like, took um, GM duties away from Doc, like, this team is scary. They're running. They're building that Golden State foundation to be competitive every single year. So, like, isn't that amazing? Like, so if we run this basketball team like a business, it can have success? Like, mind blown. So... Why wouldn't we run our DFS like a business? Like, 
I'm gonna be in your asses about that, guys. Like, I'm 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 not gonna put up with this hobby stuff anymore. Like, if you want to be a hobby guy, like that's cool. Like, I will help you out, but I don't want to hear from anybody anymore about struggling and they're doing a bunch of jabroni stuff. It's like, no, start running your stuff like a business. You'll get you will improve drastically overnight, just like the Clippers. Look at how much better and how much scarier and how more serious people are taking the Clippers now that Balmer is running it like a business. Brought in Jerry West. Okay, now we have a personnel guy. Our coach, who people weren't sure if he was still a good coach, hey, actually, he's a really good coach now that he's not worried about player personnel and, and, and bringing his son on the team. This is how it's done, guys. Clear out the stuff that doesn't belong. Align the pieces so that it does belong. Never was a team like this ever in a conversation for a marquee free agent. They might sign Kawhi Leonard. Here's the funny thing. I'm going to drink some water. Hang on a second. Shout out to everybody in chat. There's a misnomer out there about Kawhi Leonard. So let's go down a rabbit hole. So my friend Nick was like, dude, like, what's up with Kawhi, dude? Like, I'm refreshing. Like, he's an anti Lakers fan, like, Fairweather Lakers fan, anti, anti, anti Lakers fan. And I'm not disrespecting him. Like, he knows he's a Fairweather fan, <clears throat> which at least he has a team, right? So anyway, he's like, dude, what's Kawhi doing, man? Where's, what's Kawhi up to? I'm like, listen, man, let's just, let's just put ourselves in his shoes. If Kawhi Leonard, basically butted heads with Greg Popovich and the, the training staff, and he feels like his injury was misdiagnosed that forced him to miss more time. So he's shattering, Kawhi is shattering our paradigm on some stuff. Popovich, everybody loves Pops. Like, Pops kind of kind of a dickhead, you know? Like, the way that he treats reporters, like, it's not cute. Like, that's rude. Like, that's gross. So, you know, I'm sure he's a great coach, and I'm not, you know, trying to take anything away from him, but, like, I'm not surprised that Kawhi Leonard maybe wasn't wild about how things are going down in San Antonio. Crucify me, San Antonio fans. So that, that our Kawhi saga, you know, we know that. And he tries to get out, and he's only taking advice from his uncle, so everyone's talking trash about that. When we come to find out, again, when we see the whole picture, actually, uncle kind of knows what he's doing. So then he goes to Toronto, and, you know, they have some nice pieces there. You know, great year from Siakam. You know, Kyle Lowry is – Kyle Lowry Day. The only thing worse than Kemba Walker Day is Kyle Lowry Day. You know, and these are the pieces that Kawhi had to work with. It took 36 shots and a ball that bounced off the rim four times to knock out the Sixers. He's got that team so firmly on his back. It is the most heroic one-man army I can't remember, maybe not in my lifetime ever, has a player done that. I'm probably forgetting somebody. So with that in mind... This two-year saga where pretty much everybody is just like trashed Kawhi Leonard, forgot how good he was. Three years ago, I wish I had a platform three years ago. That was the year that everybody was all in love with Russell Westbrook and his triple-double chase. And James Harden, you know, they're 1A and 1B. Meanwhile, Kawhi is having much better overall season than them. The best two-player in the league. And not only that, his team has a better record. And everyone's just kind of like, whatever, bro, you play defense. So, like, you're not as good as these guys. It's like, I'm losing my mind here. I am losing my mind here. Like, people are like, you know, I'll be like, I want to tell you guys, like, I'm not that smart. And like, dude, like, you're smart. It's like, no, I'm not that smart. I just have common sense today in an era where common sense isn't so common. So I am so happy that my man Kawhi got after it. I'm so happy that he's the board man. The board man gets paid. Shout out to my boy Thomas. The board man gets paid. So guess what? After two years of all of that crap, you want to take some time? Here's, like, the beautiful thing about Kawhi Leonard. I wouldn't, dude, I wouldn't be doing anything until, like, August. I'd be like, yo, I just did everything that everybody said I couldn't. I did this, just did this thing the first time in, you know, NBA history. Took this franchise in Canada that, you know, had struggled to break through. Took them to the promised land. I now have two titles in two different leagues. Two finals MBTs on two different teams. And when I say two different leagues, the West and the East. So... Where he goes next, he could be, and I don't know if anyone's ever done this. Someone will have to tell me if someone's won a title on three different teams. Like Kawhi is in like very, you know, uncharted territory before. And we don't give him a lot of credit because he doesn't talk. And it's like, you know, I just got done watching that movie Vice. And one of the things they were talking about, Dick Cheney, like they put up this like, you know, screen, like when chaos happens or something like that and everyone out is panicking, you know, don't be aware of, the, the people that are talking a lot is like, be afraid of the quiet man. Because when everyone else is talking, he's quiet. 
He's listening. He's observing. Like, that's the type of DFS player that we want to be. Like, I'll be in a chat. Like, I was in a chat yesterday, and so this dude was like, dude, you should stop by. I'm like, bro, like, I'm here every single day. But I'm not running my mouth talking about stuff I don't know. Like, I'm observing, and I'm learning from the people that are good, and then I'm seeing stuff that the bad players are doing. Like, pfft, just had the worst downswing in my DFS career the last three weeks. Like, I am good. Like, I am encouraged with how bad these guys are, and they're the ones that are running their mouth telling these new players who are trying to learn bad strategies. And I'm just like, you hate to see it. It's a tough scene. So Kawhi should just take his time, man. Like, go to the beach. Whatever Kawhi decides is going to be there for him today, tomorrow, uh, next week. And he just bought a house in San Diego. Like, for anybody that hasn't gone to San Diego, like, if you were planning an American vacation, go to San Diego. Go stay at a hotel in La Jolla. It's one of the small, little, cozy, quiet beaches in San Diego. And you will see why Kawhi Leonard just like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. Like, I'll let y'all know when I'm ready. Back to our team-by-team breakdown. So he's probably going to go to the Lakers or the Clippers, right? And everyone's like, well, if he goes to the Lakers, he's got Anthony Davis, and he's got LeBron James, like, three-peat, championship. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We just 10 minutes ago talked about how these guys couldn't stay healthy last year, right? You know? From a fantasy perspective, that would be pretty disastrous because now we have three guys who can get into the 60s, you know, of fantasy points. Good luck trying to figure out who's going to get there. My assumption would be that LeBron, as the, the, the senior player on the team, would want Anthony Davis to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And, you know, it does make some sense that if they could get into the playoffs, which they will, then Kawhi could turn it on. But it's like nothing is guaranteed. We just saw with the Warriors, the, the, the players that didn't stay healthy. If I'm Kawhi, like I'm going to the Clippers. Like they have way better infrastructure. The team is being ran perfectly. They have so many other pieces on that team where it's like, dude, like, yo, Kawhi, we got a road trip in Phoenix, man. We know they're tanking. Take the night off. Like, And they have some dogs on that team. Like that team, like, you know, uh, Patrick Beverly, like, that dude is a dog. Like, that is that is the type of player, like, I would not want to step on the court. Like, I'm going to be exhausted. Like, he's going to mentally wear you out. He's going to physically wear you out. And he's going to challenge you on everything. That's what I love about a guy like Beverly is he's taken what little talent he's had compared to other players that are far more talented and taking it so much further because he's got that dog in him. He's got that chip on his shoulder. Like, that's that's your boy. Like, that's how I play DFS. I don't listen to anything. Like, I don't care about anybody that's that's out there. Like, I'm coming after everybody. I might get my ass kicked. I don't care. But it's like, I know that my tenacity and my perseverance and my passion, you know, I love that that quote that that hard work beats talent when talent won't work. Like, that's us, guys. Like, stop trying to be these guys. Like, oh, dude, I want to play until I can play like Osmo. It's like, all right, cool. Well, me and the rest of the Wolf Pack, we're going to keep eating because we're playing this game fearlessly, you know, and we're, we're protecting the sheep. We're going after everything that's there. So I hope Kawhi goes to Los Angeles because that's a perfect fit for him, especially with the Clippers, because, you know, he's going to have like such, a, he's not going to get as much media scrutiny. Like that's a perfect place. So I didn't intend on do, doing uh, two and a half hours on Kawhi. So we'll keep moving. Grizzlies is pretty clear what they're doing here. They cleared out Conley to make room for John Morant. And, you know, we'll probably see uh, a statistical year or at least an opportunity similar to what we saw last year with Trey Young. Uh, they, they have similar skill sets in terms of, you know, high-powered offensive players. So that could be a nice, you know, Trey Young was an awesome place of, like, salary relief and, and being different. And so that may be an awesome opportunity for, for us with John Morant. They have a lot of, you know, guards here that they've added small forward type pieces i think it's a little too early to see how this is going to shake out iguodala's there i don't see iguodala staying there for for very long i don't know why a guy in the twilight of his career would want to go unless he's just like dude like i just love you know blues music and, and barbecue like i'm good like i made a ton of money my book came out and uh won a couple titles it didn't work out here i am you know and I'll help these young guys. That might be what he wants to do. I think it probably makes more sense for him to go to the Lakers or a team like the 76ers, you know, uh, finish his career where he started. So I'd anticipate Iggy to move. Not not a whole lot of other stuff going on here, but I definitely think there will be some opportunities uh, for, for some of the, the young Grizzlies, and that's a great place to get salary relief when a team is rebuilding. Um, you know, rookies tend to have, unless they're like a stud, like Zion's salary will be crazy, but like, the rest of the rookies are pretty, like, their price doesn't fluctuate too, too much. Even Trey Young, he got up there, but it never was outrageous. Um, 
moving on to the Heat, Jimmy Butler is the big one here. Um, but another thing to keep our eye on is Bam Adebayo is back. And he was actually like a double-double machine before he got hurt. So I'd anticipate that he would have um, a larger role, assuming he's healthy. Um, but Jimmy Butler is going to be the main catalyst here. And he, this is like the perfect fit for Jimmy Butler. Like, as much as he talks about winning, like, I think that him wanting to be the alpha dog more than anything else is the most important thing to him. And, you know, he had some nice stretches with the 76ers um, along the way uh, down the stretch last year. But I just don't think that he wants to be, you know, he's never going to be the guy in Philly when Embiid's there. And I just, he doesn't really strike me as a guy that wants to be the second piece of of a team he wants to be the guy and it's like okay like dude you can be the guy but like LeBron alienates and hurts teammates feelings because he's you know arguably the best player ever created like if you were building a player in a lab you would build LeBron James Jimmy Buckets ain't LeBron James so you know attitudes everything like I wouldn't want to play with Jimmy Butler like I'm sorry man like that's not the type of guy I want to play with I really want to play with LeBron either but (laughs) at least we'd win at least we'd get some titles. So uh, we'll take a look at the Bucks. The Bucks didn't do anything here. They brought in Wesley Matthews. They lost Brogdon. They brought in the Lopez brothers. And it's like, so what? Like, who cares? I'm really disappointed in what the Bucks did. Like, I thought this was their year to win a title. And, you know, I, I, I like that, you know, they brought back. I actually like Middleton, and I like Bledsoe. Like, they're not without fault, but I, I like them. But... I just think that some of the moves the other teams have made is going to make it very, very difficult. And we, we've seen what a toll too much heavy lifting can do on a franchise key player. And we might be looking at that situation here with Giannis. And I, I wanted so badly for the Bucks to be, you know, do something this offseason to get over the hump. And I, I don't think they did. And um, I don't know if there was a move to be made. So I'm not going to discredit their guy. Clearly their, their GM knows what he's doing. I just I don't know if there was a move. And, you know, when there's not a move, doing nothing is the right solution. So maybe the, the, the card that they played was the best one they could possibly have played. But one thing I would like to see better is Meritich, you know, he was a very impactful player with, with the Pelicans. So I, I'd like to see, and even with the Bulls, like that guy can get hot. And I just don't understand why he wasn't more of a, a featured piece with the Bucks. I don't know if it was gel he got there middle of the season and was coming off an injury but that could be a new piece that that helps him more than it helped them last year so this is a to be determined I mean maybe we have them as a love candidate also I, I could see that fit he'd actually be a perfect um a perfect five and you know I know they brought back um Brooke Lopez but I mean I'd rather have love over Brooke Lopez so maybe that doesn't fit maybe there's a too many crowded big men just forget what I said that Kevin Love go someplace else uh, Timberwolves done absolutely nothing. They brought in Jordan Bell and Shabazz Napier. Like bad teams stay bad. Like I, I have no idea what the vision is here, and I know that that city really wants you know their team to to do well. I mean, Cat is amazing. You know, I again we have an attitude problem with a guy like Wiggins. Like I don't want any bad attitude people on my on my team. Like that's one of the things about like the the Daily Roto video series that we did this week is man like those guys don't have any bad attitude guys all those guys are high character guys like so i would be shipping all these dudes out that are malcontent send them someplace else man like like i get it it's cold in minnesota andrew wiggins but you make you know 30 million dollars a year as a as a middling player you're never gonna make an all-star team dog like you have a pretty good pelicans like i love 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 what the pelicans did anthony davis was leaving and it's like one of those like and this doesn't happen anymore, but, like, when you first, like, started playing, like, fantasy football, you'd be, like, asking for a trade, and it's like you'd be having, like, a superstar, and you'd just keep asking for a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, and then you got it, and it's like, it, this guy's, like, he's super excited because he just got Le'Veon Bell, and you're like, well, dude, I just got, you know, Pat Mahomes, and I got, you know, Travis Kelsey, and I got, uh, you know, Lamar Miller's not anything, but I can plug him in, and... You know, I'll take my chances with some of these, these Packers running backs that you threw in. And, oh, by the way, you know, I, I just got Juju smith Schuster. Like, that's kind of like the trade that, like, just happened from, like, a fantasy football, like, side-by-side comparison. Like, uh, the the new GM, Griffin, just basically just felt like he just kept asking the Lakers for stuff. Hey, let me get a little more. Like, eh, I want you this guy. It's just like, other than getting Kyle Kuzma, like, I don't know what more he could have fleeced them for. And, you know, they lose J- Julius Randle, but they get Zion, like, you know, Julius Randle doesn't get enough credit. 
And I, I, I think that his and Zion games are, are very similar. Zion's obviously just got a much higher ceiling. But, like, I love this. Like, Lonzo's a perfect fit. He doesn't care about getting points. Like, he can distribute the ball. Like, Ingram can get to hell. Josh Hart's awesome off the bench. J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick, like, if I ever get famous, like, don't worry about who my agent's going to be. It's going to be J.J. Redick's agent. Like, this guy's made almost $50 million in his, like, post-30s just – I mean, he can get hot, but he doesn't play defense. Like, shout out to JJ, man. JJ got paid. And, like, you know, Philly was a popular place to be in the basketball scene the last couple of years. You know, he was with the Clippers when that was hot. Now the Sixers. Now the Pelicans. And, like, he's trying to do a media career. Like, JJ, man, like, he's going to start, you know, from a fantasy perspective. Like, there's a lot of great pieces here. And th- th- that's one of the other, like, nuggets to, to think about is, like, these small market teams – they're typically going to have their salary not increased as often. Like, they're going to be undervalued most of the time. I can already see myself going to this New Orleans team every single time they play as, as core pieces. Like, Drew Holiday, when it's a Drew Holiday day, like, I love Drew Holiday day. Like, that is one of my favorite days. Like, I just know I'm – he might not get there every time. I'm getting max effort from him. He's not going to half-ass it like Kemba or Kyle Lowry. Like, Drew Holiday goes – to the limit every single day. So great pieces here. Derek Favors, you know, he got hurt and his ceiling has seemingly dwindled. Maybe a change of scenery to help out with the big man role is, is going gonna, is gonna to serve him well. I, I just love what the Pelicans are doing. They're building sustainability. So uh, that's going to be a fun league pass team, a fun fantasy team. Um, you know, I expect Zion to walk in right away. As, as hyped as he is to the point of overhyped, I still think he's going to justify um, all, all of it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm – I'm one of these people that I think I can look at Zion with with clear glasses, not rosy color, not negative. Just I feel like I I can see him for what he's going to be, and I think he's going to be as 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 advertised. As much as I want to tell the, the hype train to slow down, I get it. Like it's there, the potential's there. And then we move on to the Knicks. Everyone's giving the Knicks a lot of crap. I don't really mind it. You know they should have never got out of the Porzingis deal, but whatever. I get it. You know, they lose, you know, a couple pieces, nothing really meaningful other than maybe Cornette. You know, that was probably the only piece that they that they lost that could have had potential. I know they were sick of Moutier and Hazonia and some of these guys that were high draft picks that never really worked out. And those guys are just going to probably flop around team to team the rest of their career. Brought in R.J. Barrett. You know, I don't really know what to think about R.J. Barrett's game. I really wasn't that impressed at Duke. Um, he didn't really see the type of stuff that we want to see. I didn't watch a ton of college basketball other than like Duke games and some of the big games during the stretch. So, you know, by all means, I'm an expert at it. So take ex- everything that I say with, um, you know, the utmost seriousness. But, you know, I'm willing to give RJ a shot, especially if he takes care of us from a fantasy perspective. That's one of the other things that we can learn is purge your biases always because – we may think that R.J. Barrett sucks or he's good or whatever. You know, some people are already touting him the best player in the draft because, you know, they want something that they can favorite on Twitter to come back five years from now to, to show all of us how right they were when none of us care to begin with. Like, I don't care what your opinion is. I only care about, you know, how much money I'm making playing this game. So whether you've got a good one or a bad one. I'm not listening anyway. <laughs> Just playing the numbers. So play the numbers. But but RJ Barrett could could be a guy that, you know, because this team doesn't have a lot of talent around him, you know, they have some vets and it's like, you know, I like the RJ Barrett piece. I like Julius Randle, you know. I don't even mind the Todd Gibson or the Bobby Portis pieces cuz those guys at least I know what they do. Like they can score close to the basket and get rebounds. Bobby Portis has a little bit of an outside game. I love Julius Randle. Julius Randle is one of my favorite pieces that nobody ever plays, and that guy just, like, he... If Julius Randle were, were, you know, uh, a more boisterous player and not the quiet guy that he is, like, we would talk about him so different, so much differently. Like, he's basically, like, Draymond Jr., um, you know, better score, uh, not as good of a defensive player. Like, he does it all, though. Like, he can score and dish, and I, I want to say... I mean, I don't know what the triple-double count was last year, but... He was a triple-double threat most times once Anthony Davis went down. So this is like, I'm looking at this team, and it's like, yeah, it's R.J. Barrett's team, but, like, I think that, you know, this is going to be Julius Randle's team um, more so than Barrett's. Like, Barrett did not assert himself in in Zion's shadow. So if that alpha dog comes back, you know, it's going to be Barrett's team. It might not be. He might be comfortable letting 
Randall run the show, but Randall's totally comfortable being the alpha dog. So I cannot wait to go to Julius Randall every single time I get the opportunity, as long as the salary doesn't get outrageous. But there's going to be some some nice value here with, with the Knicks. Everyone's talking crap on what they did. I don't mind it. They didn't overpay for any of these guys. The only thing that really bothers me is I'm not really sure what they're going to do with this Alfred Payton, Reggie Bullock, Wayne Ellington, you know, point guard, off guard. If they're, if they're all going to be backups, like, that's cool. But, like, one thing you don't want to see with a young team is have a, a, a ball hog just wants to take shots and not do anything else on the court guy like Reggie Bullock. Like, I don't know if Reggie Bullock's a good player. I just know that he either gets, you know, six points or 23 points. But, like, that's a terrible fit for a team like that. Like, I, I that's the only piece about what they did that, that concerns me that I'm not really wild about. At least Alfred Payton passes the ball. Wayne Ellington, you know, he's a productive player, but the, the Reggie Bullock piece doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the Thunder, they've got their hands tied by the luxury tax. That is one thing I do know about the luxury tax is because of the Paul George and the, Russ, the Russell Westbrook and the Stephen Adams contracts. They can't do much, um, so they lost one of the Marquise brothers who was only there for a cup of coffee um, since February. So nothing's doing here. They can't really do anything. Um, you know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, how savvy – their their um, GM is and I'm like Sam Presti this is still the dude that let Harden go for freaking peanuts and yeah he got Paul George away but Paul George wanted to leave anyway Paul George wanted to be anybody or but Indiana so let's let's pump the, the brakes on on Sam Presti you know so and then we take a look at guys like Enos Cantor and Depot it's like how much better would this team be if they had Enos Cantor Oladipo Westbrook Stephen Adams and cap room so yeah tell me about how good Sam Presti is the Magic, uh, nothing really doing here. They're they're kind of um, hanging back, and Alfred Payton's out. Fultz is still there. I, I don't know what's going on with that guy, but you know, it looks like there's going to be some guard minutes that have been freed up for him to potentially get in there. Um, Aminu's there. I always like Aminu, but they already have a ton of big men with with Aaron Gordon and and Vucevic coming back. Maybe they move Aaron Gordon to the three and Aminu can play the four, or Aminu is going to be a bench player. I don't really know, but if, if Aminu ends up being a bench player, he might be a nice guy. Because that's another way in, in DFS that you can get sneaky is some of these bench guys will still get starter minutes, but they come off the bench. That might be a role here for, for Aminu. But then again, you know, none of the backup bigs did that well for the Magic unless there was an injury to one of the starters. 76ers are having my absolute favorite offseason outside of the Pelicans. I absolutely love what uh, what they what they did in just retooling. You know, Jimmy Butler. Like this. Is, so we talked about Carmelo Anthony and how we can stay ahead of these players because they're not doing very well fantasy wise. It, it relates to like their NBA careers. I know it sounds very silly to make that connection, but it's true. So let's take a look at a guy like um, Josh Richardson. The majority of NBA fans don't know how good this is, but us that play fantasy, like, we get it. And he's a little un- underserved in, in the type of player that he gets credit for, and I get it. Like, he's playing on this Miami Heat team that was really put together in a really weird fashion. They didn't really have much of an identity other than, like, hey, Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra, leave us alone. It's like, all right, cool. So I think that this trade is perfect for both teams because Jimmy gets to go to Miami and be an alpha dog and hang out by the beach. Josh Richardson doesn't have to be the alpha dog anymore, and he can, you know, blend in perfectly. And people are like, well, who's who's Josh Richardson? You know, who's gonna cover who's gonna cover the the scrappy guards like Dame Lillard and Kemba Walker? It's like, well, first of all, you know, Josh Richardson is a defensive specialist. Like, Jimmy's good at defense. So I don't I don't really want to like hold the argument of who's better. Like Jimmy Butler is obviously a better player, but like I would much rather have Josh Richardson on my team as my third or fourth piece than Jimmy Butler because of the blend and the chemistry. And this team is going to be big. They're going to be defense, uh, very defensive savvy, defensively savvy, whatever. I'm not connecting my adverb correctly. Defense wins championships, folks. You know, the Raptors had one of the best defenses this last year. Game over. Everybody talks about how good the Warriors were, but nobody talks about how good they were defensively. That was a very good defensive team the last couple of years. This is going to be a very scary defensive team. From a DFS perspective, you know, 
it's going to be challenging because there's a lot of mouths to feed. And I think they would be smart to to feed Embiid. And, you know, they also brought in Kylo Quinn and um, Al Horford to help out shoulder some of his load. So, like, that's perfect. You know, a lot of people are talking crap on Ben Simmons because he can't score. Who cares? Like, feed everybody the rock. Get boards. Play some defense. Get in the passing lanes. I wouldn't care. You know, a point guard's supposed to, to score, right? But I think Draymond Green is 6'9". Ben Simmons is 6'10". So... What if we looked at Ben Simmons as a power forward instead? Would we be as critical? Josh Richardson can bring the ball up. He can run an offense. You know, so it's like, dude, leave Ben Simmons alone. Like, I would happily have Ben Simmons on my team. Like, I would pick Willie Colley-Stein first and then Ben Simmons if we're playing pickup because those guys can distribute the rock. Yeah, Ben Simmons should assert himself more. Like in the the rookie all-star game, he just went to the rim all the time. He should do more of that. You know, you know, we'll see. They haven't been able to get that out of him yet, but he's capable of it. We've seen it. Um, they lost some secondary pieces outside of that, but this is a really scary starting five. Um, it's going to be one of the best. No, it is the best two-way starting five in all of the league. They're going to go deep. They're going to go deep. If um, if I were betting on who's going to win the title, the the Sixers would be my. Oh, we have so much time before next year. We just finished the finals, but. I actually like what the Sixers did way more than the Lakers. I think that their path to a title is much easier than the Lakers, but what do I know? Moving on to the Suns, you know, this is a franchise that, you know, is just insisting on building around Booker because he can score 73 points and not play any defense. So it's never going to it's never going to be that great. You know, some of the guys I like Sarich, you know, Kelly Oubre, Tyler Johnson, you know, Ricky Rubio. I mean, th- these are going to be some decent fantasy pieces, but it's it's just like the Suns are always well priced, but you're just always like, I don't. It's like you don't know what you're gonna get, and so it's like the, the frustration is gonna continue. Like these guys aren't gonna be priced very high, but you know they're not. They're priced that way for a reason. You know this is one of the smaller market West Coast teams that's consistently underowned, and we can take advantage of that. But just understand that the consistency is not gonna be there. Moving on to the Blazers. A uh, big move that they've done so far is bringing in Whiteside, another guy that gets, you know, trashed on probably more than he should. You know, he got a he got overpaid, and it's like if you get overpaid, automatically you suck. And it's like, ah, you know what, I don't necessarily – I think I think that's pretty unfair. So, you know, I think he was just brought in as, as Nurkic insurance. That was a pretty devastating leg injury that, that he has. So I think that, you know, he's going to be um, – the guy that can basically do what they just lost in Enos Cantor, like pretty similar guys where it's like they're very active around the rim. Whiteside gets credit for being a good defensive player because he has like blocks and stuff. And, you know, there are the games where he's like 10 points, you know, 10 blocks, 18 rebounds. Like that's what we want from a fantasy perspective. And I like the fit. Like Dame makes everybody around him better. And there's a lot of change of scenery. There's a lot of minutes freed up. You know, the biggest thing about the Blazers here is what they lost from a minutes perspective. Every single piece from Turner and Myers Leonard, well, not so much Myers Leonard, but Harkless, Aminio, Cantor, Seth Curry, all those guys were playing close to 20 minutes or more. So there's a lot of minutes here. And we know that Dame and we know that CJ can't do all the heavy lifting themselves. So, you know, maybe this is the the year that Hazonia seems to put it together, you know, playing with another foreign player in Nurkic. Maybe he likes that. You know, Woj announced that Anthony Tolliver, that was like a key free agent. So that's all we need to know about how slow yesterday's news day was versus Sunday night. Um, but, you know, I this is – I think of anything, our main takeaway is, you know, there's some sneaky value here with Whiteside and Hazonia just because of public persona. Again, we want to purge our biases. I, I would not be afraid at all to go to Hazonia or Whiteside very early in the season to take advantage of the public perception and their low salaries. The Kings, it's like – uh, so one of these teams, because I love De'Aaron Fox, that I want so badly to be able to, you know, put things together, and then they make a bunch of moves that don't make sense. Like, should have taken Luka, obviously. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Bagley because, you know, he's proving to be a nice player. But it's like, you bring in Bagley, well, now you're running out Collie Stein. You know, you could have Luka and Fox and Collie Stein. Like, that's a pretty nice little court. But for some reason, they bring in Harrison Barnes on a team that already had a bunch of wings. We've got Bogdanovich, the other Bogdanovich, and, um, you know, one of the Jacksons. I think there's like 17 Josh Jacksons in the league, so you get them all confused. Justin, they have, Josh Jackson plays in Phoenix. Justin Jackson plays for the Kings. I'm going to change my name to John Jackson, and then we'll all have a lot of fun. But they, but, but they brought back Harrison Barnes. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand that. Like, like let Harrison Barnes walk, and then they bring in Corey Joseph. It's like, okay, you need a backup point guard. 
They bring in Ariza, like, okay, like, what do you need Harrison Barnes if you have Ariza? Like, Harrison Barnes is better than Ariza, but how much more, you know? So I don't, I, it just irritates me. This team should be way better than they are. And right when they seem like they're figuring it out, they don't. Deadman and Holmes, I think those are brought in as, as Collie Stein insurance, but neither of those guys played that much on either of the two teams that they've been on. So, you know, I don't know what they're doing here, especially if they're, you know, maybe they're thinking Bagley's going to struggle to stay healthy. I don't know. But I'd anticipate that this is, you know, for the most part going to be Fox and Bagley as our go-to. And, you know, Harrison Barnes, you know, now that we've talked about why does it make sense from a, a team perspective, fantasy, it might. You know, his salary is never going to get up there. Corey Joseph can do quite a bit of damage um, as, a, as a backup point guard. And Arisa, you know, we talked about him. You know, if they plan on starting him, he's going to see close to, you know, 35, 40 minutes some nights. So, Better, better fantasy team than than NBA team, that's for sure. And I just feel bad for De'Aaron Fox because he wants to be there, and they're not really rewarding him. Uh, the Spurs, you know, screw the Spurs. You know, they, they're an irritating franchise. And, you know, the only thing to really pay attention here is DeMar Carroll gets to annoy us in a new franchise that has the same colors as the, the last franchise that he played for in the Nets. And the, the thing to keep an eye on here is DeJounta Murray. He was supposed to be their, their key piece at point guard. He hurt his knee last year, and he's back. So... Um, that could be a sneaky way to go, but this seems a mess. I hated playing the Spurs. Any, any, any. Sometimes the Marcus Aldridge, you know. Sometimes Rudy Gay. But it's like, ugh, definitely not Demar Derozan. Like this is such a frustrating team. Like, I hate Kyle Lowry Day number one, Kemba Walker Day number two, and then San Antonio Spurs Day number three were, were always never fun. Moving on to the Raptors, not doing anything. I'm just joking around. I have Kawhi Leonard out. They could, they could be the the favorite to sign him, but I don't think they're doing anything. Um, until he decides what's, what he wants to do. And we already know that Kawhi is going to be on the beach till the end of the summer. So team by team, I hope that's uh, some value for you guys. We'll hop into the chat and see if we got any questions here. And uh, it's got a storm outside, so if you guys pick that up, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we got um, Franchise 410 mentioned that uh, Michael Porter Jr. now for the Nuggets. And, you know, th- I'm, I'm just taking the wait-and-see approach there. I know that, you know, he's had his injuries, and it's uh, one of those things where it's like, you know, what player are, are we going to get? Um, you know, I don't know, but I don't have any biases towards Porter, but I, I love where your head's at, Franchise, because I think that if Michael Porter can do anything, you, well, first of all, you know, it's going to be pretty crowded, but we've seen with the Nuggets, like, that's one of the things that I do like about the Nuggets is outside of Jokic, like, Michael Malone, for as criticized as he gets, like he's not afraid to invite healthy competition. And sometimes that jacks with the, the chemistry and the rotation. But you know what? I, I, I would rather a coach tinker and find the right fit than the coach that just wants to, um, you know, rest on his laurels. So, you know, I, 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 I like where your head's at, Franchise. I think Michael Porter could definitely be uh, a sleeper. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to wrap up the pod here. I just want to thank you guys uh, for stopping by. This will be on... Um, iTunes um, as soon as we get approved and Stitcher and everywhere else that that we have I I hope this was you know (laughs) halfway decent semi okay everybody on Twitch thanks for joining stopping by I really appreciate you guys and um, yeah this is this is real exciting we're gonna try to do this at least once a week and if you guys like it more than that we can do more than that you know I'm I'm trying to be a man of the people so I really appreciate you guys Um, you know check out the YouTube series on Daily Roto you know um, those guys are incredible. They deserve, if anybody deserves your 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 DFS dollars, they're they're definitely making a case for the most deserving. I, I love everything that they do. And some people will ask me, hey, you know, um, I see you talk about Fantasy Cruncher. I see you talk about, you know, Fantasy Labs. I think you, I think I see you talk about Saberstone. I see you talk about Daily Roto. And it's like, I'm not a fanboy. Like I'm independent. Like I'm not picking a side. Like, I'm a libertarian. Like, I'm going to do whatever makes the most sense. So I like something that all of those sites do, and it helps me as a player. And, I, you know, the DFS is a business to me. So I just look at it from the perspective of, you know, if, if I'm John, the CEO, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting at a table right now, and my, I've got my round table of consultants. You know, I've got my Fantasy Cruncher is my um, optimizing consultant, and SaberSim is my high-variant sports consultant um, that specializes in, you know, I I think the simulation model is better for a sport like um, the baseball and hockey. And then Daily Roto is like the kings of like actual really good day-to-day content. And they're awesome at NBA and awesome at NFL. It's like, dude, I get taxed. Like 
if you get a 1099 from DraftKings, like you have to pay taxes on that. But, you know, I don't know if there's any benefit from paying taxes other than when the money's spent correctly in California, which was never the case. But now that I'm in Texas, uh, that's much more so the case. But I need write-offs. So I'd rather spend money on more tools for my business than to see it get pissed away uh, by, you know, the California California government. So, you know, that's going to wrap it up for this podcast. Again, want to shout everybody out that stopped by. Uh, we're going to keep doing this. I, I, I just really appreciate you guys. I'm having a blast putting all this stuff together. Thank you again to everybody that stopped by in chat. I love you guys. Um, and yeah, if you weren't able to stop by, I hope you're consuming this any way that you like podcast. I'm um, actually was talking to the producer about maybe putting together a separate podcast feed for YouTube to be able to um, basically take the audio from our YouTube videos and put it on um, a podcast form just for anybody that's already watched the videos and maybe wants a refresher course or I don't have time to sit in front of the computer. And let me listen to it first and then I can come back and see if it's worth watching after I've listened to it because I, I consume most of my media through through podcasts and books on tape. So like whenever I'm doing something uh, throughout the day, like I like two birds, one stone kind of a thing. So I'm just trying to, however you guys like con- consuming media, uh, being able to uh, put it together. Um, so we got a, got a bunch of fun things uh, that, we're, that we're working on. Next week we'll do the Beep on the Jeep tribute. I was talking to El Jefe earlier today about uh, doing a feature on his site. So like I'm just loving this stuff, man. Like I'm not... I'm not trying to, I'm not going to go tout. Like people think like, oh, you're going to build a website. You're going to give everything for free and they're going to go tout. It's like, no, 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 no. Like there are plenty of people that are doing great, 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 great work covering DFS. I'm just a player who loves the game. I like producing content. I only have one friend that plays DFS, Blazeman8, what up? Um, shout out to, to Chris. And you guys, I'm here because of you guys, because of my network and friends and the Wolfpack and all the fun stuff that we're having. Like, this is just my way to connect with you guys. And as much as you guys think I'm helping you, like, you guys are helping me. Like, I am getting better. I learn something from every conversation that we have. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm looking at this more as, you know, uh, setting up, you know, a media company that just talks about DFS. Like, I, I would much rather just produce content focus on the people that are doing the right thing for the industry, get better as a player, and just really try to pay it forward from the people that have done so much for me. You know, Manny, um, obviously that guy is just an absolute boss. And part of the reason I came up with the Twitch cast is to get some podcasting reps before starting doing interviews. You know, I love the Joe Rogan format. I love the opportunity to combine some of these ideas. I don't know how well this Twitch cast thing, uh, you guys get a real life look at me and my ADHD and being antsy and all over the place and, and being animated and, and hopefully um, this is hopefully this podcast didn't suck. I actually had a lot of fun putting it together for you guys. So thank you again for everybody that stopped by. Thank you again for Chris, uh, my boy Sequence, for all this help graphically, uh, creatively. Uh, the, this uh, I just absolutely love the song that he allowed me to use. It's I just think it's perfect. Combines all the things that I like, hip hop. And if you guys get a chance, like listen to the lyrics to that song because it's weird because it's a relationship song. So why does like why did JG pick this for the silly relationship song? Why did he pick it for his sports podcast? It's like listen to that song again, and instead of thinking of a significant other, think of TFS. <laughs> like DFS is that like that thing that like that relationship. It's not toxic, but you can't quit it. Like we've already been bit. Like we have the bug, and we talked about last week how. This can go from fun to addiction very quickly. So I want to help you guys keep this fun. Um, you know, the more winning players we create, DraftKings will bake more pie. You know, we're not running out of pie. So when one contest fills at DraftKings, they open up others. So the more player um, empowerment that we can do, I just think it's going to be better. I'm, I'm, I'm very bullish on the future of DFS. You know, everybody talks about, oh, you know, DFS is dying. It's like, dude, you say that, and then this fall... Two months from now, NFL Week 1, we will have another record-breaking amount of money to be won in the DraftKings lobby. So, like, if you're new to DFS and you're just getting your your sea legs about you and learning how to do this, like, you picked a good time. Like, the game is still beatable, it's still, and it's always fun as hell, and, you know, we'll connect you with the right pieces to get together. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pride myself on getting you guys connected with the right with the right people to help you out. You know, I... Some people have asked me about sponsorships. Like, I don't want to take any money from anybody that's DFS related. If we're going to get a sponsor, I'd rather take it from a company outside of DFS. That way, the products that are related to DFS that I endorse 
are the ones that I'm actually using on a day-to-day -day basis and not because somebody's paying me to do so. So we got quite a bit going on here. Uh, we went a little bit long and I just thank you guys again. I uh, appreciate you guys. Any feedback is appreciated and welcomed. Any guests that you guys wanna see, I just hired a virtual assistant. So we'll get her emailing folks to, to get on the podcast. And you know, I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan and just wanna just dive deep on this stuff, you know, whatever, even if it's a guest outside of DFS, you know, I think that's one of the things that's the most fun is what can we take from our lives outside of DFS and apply it to DFS to think more creatively, think outside of the box and see an angle that no one else is, is thinking about. So <sighs> we're off, we're running. The website's going to be ready any day now. I appreciate you guys so much. I'll, I'll see you guys next time.